Welcome back, everybody. My name is Grace, or Gibby, whatever you prefer. And today I'm here with a complete guide to the Entropy Finale, and that is Killing the Entropy Boss, both the Starter version and the Challenge version, where you can later choose between the Normal and the Challenge mode, which has a checkpoint and a gear locker. This is the Starter version, and now the Starter version actually is a little tricky, because its attack pattern is less uh, standard than you might think. So, to demonstrate what it's going to do, I'm actually going to put a little flow chart up on screen right now. And as you can see, it simply rotates from dark to ice, and then depending on its SP, it does ice or dark. Then it goes back, dark, ice, depending on its SP, ice or dark. And that cycle just repeats throughout the kill. So I just tanked a dark hit, which means it's time to switch to my ice armor. And both of these are just generic dark and ice armors. The black dragon rider is from the guardian tower. And this armor is from Yulger's shop. And what I'm going to be doing is simply spamming a light spell with the mystic retro golden axe because entropy is weakest to light. I've also got the Galanoth guest, which just hits really hard against dragons. And that's going to be my damage output. Mystic Retro Golden Axe helps me maintain my resources. Now again, for the damage cycle. He did Dark, then Ice. Now he has SP, so he's going to do Ice again. So I'm going to stay in my Ice Armor and Ice Shield. And next turn, I'll be switching to Dark, because the cycle will restart. So I switch to my Dark Armor and Dark Shield. And I just continue the, um, the kill. This initial fight is pretty simple, but if you don't keep track of the rotating elements, it can be tricky. So make sure to use the flow chart and pay attention. And if you lose track of what element it's attacking with, you can use the battle log turn counter and basically subtract by three or subtract by um, three or two, depending on um, if you won initiative or lost initiative, and that'll tell you what uh, element it'll attack with. So, it just attacked with ice, but its SP isn't full, so now I switch back to dark. And again, that cycle of three is about to end again, so he's going to attack with dark on his next turn as well so I can stay in this darkness armor. Also, this Galanoth guest is just the temporary guest. I grabbed it from the Greatest Warrior 2, uh, just because I figured it would help speed it up, because my damage output is a little bit low with this uh, unoptimized, Yulger-restricted setup. So it just attacked with ice, and now its SP bar is full, so it will attack with ice again, and I'm going to use Lore Master's Tome to just regain my mana, because I ran low. And because it just used its third attack, now we're back to dark. And now it attacked with dark, so we're going to switch to ice, but I think it's going to die this turn, so it won't really matter. Okay, and there we go. That's how you can very simply defeat the first mode of entropy. Um, it doesn't have a damage cap or anything, so you can also nuke it to hell and back, but this is a very easy way to just follow its attack pattern and tank all of its hits without losing much HP. So I'm going to skip through all this dialogue, uh, I've got a lore video planned for the next couple weeks, um, but this is the checkpoint. So battling alongside Drakath and fighting alone, the boss's mechanics are exactly the same, but for this one, Drakath chokes the boss very effectively, making it much easier to handle. But for this, we're going to be using the challenge mode. Now the challenge mode, the attack pattern is not the same as the initial mode. So let me tell you what it is. First, it attacks with dark twice. So, uh, we're just going to use the same damage method, 
because he now has Backlash and a damage cap per turn. He can only lose 1k HP, roughly. In this case, it's 925, as you can see from the plot armor effect. But the Backlash isn't crazy if you have Endurance. And the plot armor is only an issue if you're really trying to nuke him. So it doesn't really matter to us. So he used one Dark Attack, which means we can tank one more. I'm going to use Liquid Courage for now because this boss does do notably more damage. So I want to reduce my damage intake as much as I can. Now that he did his second Dark Attack, you'll see his SP bar will light up. If you damage his SP by some mechanism, he actually won't have his SP bar light up, but he will still do an Ice Attack. So do be careful of that. His third attack is always Ice. So, so far, his cycle is Dark, Dark, Ice. And the Ice Attack is quite strong. I recommend using an Ice Resistance Misc if you have it. His next attack, so his fourth attack in the cycle, is Harm. So I'm going to switch to an armor that's fully defensive because you can't resist Harm damage. You could use the Horror Show Void Vigilante full set bonus to cut Harm damage in half, but I'm not really going to bother with that because it's not Yogur-only restrictions and it's just not really necessary. So now that he tanked his Harm attack, the next thing he's going to do is a charge-up mode, and you'll see what I'll do to counter that but it doesn't matter what armor we're in because he won't attack me this turn. So, Entropy tries to catch his breath to attack with renewed vigor, stun, or overwhelm him. So what we're going to do here is use Nocturnal Night Raiders. The reason we're doing that is because it's a spell with 9 hits, and you only need to hit him at 6 times to break his charge. Now, you could also use a stun effect, but stun effects can be less reliable, even though this boss doesn't have boss boost, um, stun effects, they can fail. Especially if they're resistance-based, like, say, Mogadon or Queen's Crown, Queen's uh, Corgi. That guest. Um, since he has low resistances, the chances may not be 100%. There are ways to get around it, but for me, I think the simplest and easiest way is a multi-hit effect. Uh, Warriors and Rangers, you can see what I've done in those kills. Um, but for mages, I recommend Nocturnal Night Raiders, because it has 9 hits. I'm also using the Ring of Precision, found in Robina's shop, to boost my accuracy. So we hit him much more than, um, than 6 times. So you can see, you interrupt Entropy's recovery. Now, that's his full cycle. He did Dark Attack, Dark Attack, Ice Attack, Harm Attack, Charge Up, and he was interrupted. Now it repeats. So it's a six turn cycle. So now we'll go, we'll stay in our dark armor because that's what he's going to attack with next. And we'll just keep doing the same DPS method to kill him. So just to be clear, he's going to attack twice with dark, once with ice, once with harm, and then he'll spend two turns on his charge up into his self buff attack. So this is going to be his ice attack. And he should die this turn. Or maybe next turn. Nope, this turn. So there we go. Those are all of Entropy's mechanics. Um, Watch out for the backlash if you're nuking him, and just make sure to respect his elemental swaps. If you're really struggling to keep track of what turn it is uh, and what element you have to defend against, you could try Paladin with Undeadify or Retro Golden with Undeadify, because then you could only defend against Light, and you'd be just fine. But this method works, you're just switching between Dark and Ice uh, when needed. Also, if you forgot what I said about the attack pattern, I'm going to have it linked or written in the description. So there we go. This is also my mage method. Um, so I did a mage method, and I have a fighter method and a ranger method coming up after this. Uh, but this is also a Yulgar only gear restricted run. So pretty much anyone can do this boss with any gear as long as you have basic elemental defenses and a pretty okay damage source. 
the Galanoth guest really does help if you're struggling, and of course, if you have charisma. Uh, I didn't realize quite how hard it hits, but it really just did numbers on this boss. It was hitting for like 400 a turn, minimum. So next up is the ranger method. This is my ranger method, and I simply ran dexterity, charisma, and endurance. Uh, you can see I had some random gear um, equipped beforehand in the kill, but don't worry about that. My main strategy was using two fully defensive armors, um, one for ice and one for dark, as well as just a generic shield. And then the pet and guest I used were uh, an offensive multi-hit guest, in this case Luna-style cat Shiro, and a defensive pet, in this case Baby Egg, um, but I could have used Fairy Godmother, and it would have been about the same. Now, I basically just followed this boss's mechanics, as I just explained in the Mage method. Um, and so I just defended against the correct element each turn, whether it was Dark or Ice. And then for my damage source, I had the High Communicant's Bow, um, which is simply a light bow that restores some SP on each hit. Uh, you don't have to use this bow, you could use any light damage source for rangers. I just used the bow because I wanted to do the kill without Essence Orb to make it look really easy. Um, so I wanted some SP efficiency. The thing I also did for this kill was equip an Ice Misk and a Dark Misk uh, when I needed. And that was because I wasn't sure how much damage I would be taking, because this was one of my earlier kills. Um, but it turned out that that type of defensive play was a little bit overkill, and I ended up taking more damage from the harm skills overall. But in essence, I just attacked the boss down, and my pet and guest also whittled it down. And for the turns where it was charging up and I had to do a multi-hit effect or a stun, I simply let my cat hero guest, which is five hits, um, carry me through. That was a little risky in hindsight. If I had missed a couple hits and my guest had missed a couple hits, um, it would have gotten the charge off. So I recommend also using a multi-hit pet, like Fairy Godmother, or using a four-hit skill, like, for example, uh, Neko Overlord. That would pretty much solve any risk of your attacks missing. And that's pretty much it. I slowly whittled the boss down. I used a damage misc, in this case Light Orb, uh, when I felt like it, and a defensive misc when I felt like it. And it didn't really matter. I had a big margin for success. That's pretty much the kill on a ranger. Uh, you could do a similar thing on a fully offensive ranger, but honestly, if you're a fully offensive ranger, I'd actually mimic what I did on my warrior instead of what I did on this ranger build. So check out the next clip. This is my warrior method for killing the challenge mode of entropy. Now I'm just running basic stats with strength, endurance, and charisma. 
and I've got the Accuracy Potion, and that helps me get through the quest in Entropy's form faster, because Entropy's form is a little bit inaccurate. Now, we already know Entropy's attack pattern, as I explained it at the beginning of the video, but that means we're just going to be respecting... Um, respecting... Oh, apparently I still have the Dreketh guest. Well, I'll unsummon him, because I'm not supposed to have him. But apparently it's saved from when I was doing some earlier testing. Anyways, what I'm going to be doing for this fight is running a simple healing pet and guest setup, as well as respecting the attacks of Entropy. So it just did one darkness attack, which means it's going to do one more, and then it's going to switch to its ice attack. So because of its ice attack, we're going to switch to Nightmare Plate. And because Nightmare Plate has an efficient or Ellie locked attack, we're going to use that. Now, if you don't have Nightmare Plate, you can use any old ice armor and just use um, a basic attack or a skill. Because Entropy's resistances are pretty balanced, it doesn't really matter what element it is. Fire and Light are better, but they're not necessary if your skill is going to be more efficient like in the case of Nightmare. I'm also going to use an Ice Defensive Misc. In this case, it's Horror Show Void Visor, but it doesn't really matter what you use. So we tank the Ice Attack very easily, and next up is the Harm Attack. Now, we can't really resist the Harm Attack without the Horror Show Void full set, and since I didn't bring that armor, I'm not going to use it. And it's also not necessary, because while this attack is pretty meaty, it's not going to kill you. If you're not running Endurance, you might run into some issues, so I suggest using the Sisters of Mercy spell, which will give you a 50% damage reduction to all elements uh, before it uses the Harm attack. So on the turns after it uses the Ice SP attack, you're going to want to use Sisters of Mercy. So, next is its Stun phase. To get around its Stun phase, we're going to be using the um, Trontosaurus Rex armor. Now, I have an auto-hit weapon because I want to make sure my attacks don't miss because you need six hitting attacks to interrupt this phase. Or you can use a stun. But I think using an auto-hit weapon with a multi-hit skill is more reliable. So that's what I'm going to do. Also, it happens to be fire which is very efficient for damage for our purposes. Now we don't have to worry about our defenses because Entropy is stunned after that turn. Now that we beat the, um, the charge up attack, it's going to reset to its initial um, rotation. And so I'm just gonna repeat the cycle and get in my dark defensive gear for two turns, tank both dark attacks, switch to ice, and then use Tyrannosaurus when it does its charge up again on the next phase. So I'll just go through it one more time. Tank two dark attacks. You'll notice its SP bar is glowing. That's how you know it's going to do the attack if you don't keep track yourself. So use my... Use my defensive setup for ice. Now I'm going to unequip the Misc to save SP. Next it's doing a harm attack, so it doesn't matter which armor I'm in, I'm going to take the same damage. Next we have to interrupt its charging phase, and then that's the end of the cycle. So that's pretty much it for my warrior method. Um, I'm just going to keep this method going, this rotation of abilities going, throughout the next turns until I kill the boss. And you can see I'm barely losing HP with my healing pet and guest. So that's the method.
So, the entry boss introduces a new type of damage cap, which is a damage limit per turn, independent of hit counts. Now I wanted to see if this test, or if this monster, respects fragile, if this mechanic is affected by fragile, or if the HP loss from fragile is separate entirely. So I've got Shinyaro form and celerity, and I'm simply going to use Death Fist with some potency. Can't forget my potency. Well, apparently I already forgot some of my potency, but let's just hope it inflicts, because if not, I'll have to re-record the clip. Um, so, Death Fist. The Brutal Strike leaves them almost dead. And let's check the battle log. So it started out at 7k, 800 HP, and it lost 900 HP and dealt 281 damage. So we've already done more damage than the 967 HP per turn. Brutal Strike leaves them already dead. So you can see in one turn we've done about 2k damage. 281 earth damage, 330 earth damage, and then also the HP loss of 859 twice. So, this proves that Fragile does circumvent Entropy's modified damage cap. Entropy has a known attack rotation. This test with Underwormling is going to see if damaging Entropy's SP changes that known attack, attack um, pattern. So basically, my goal is to simply... Um, deal enough damage with SP with Underwormling that it doesn't have enough SP to do its charge up ice attack. And if that is the case, we'll see if Entropy does a weaker ice attack or simply does a dark attack instead. So currently it has enough SP to do the skill. Let's see if Underwormling does enough damage to keep it from having enough SP. Okay, so it doesn't have enough SP, but it still does an ice attack. So. This test proves that if you lower Entropy's SP, the attack rotation doesn't change. However, whether or not it boosts the damage of the ice attack with its SP bar does change. So, if you damage Entropy's SP enough, its ice attack is weaker, but it still follows the same pattern. And just to test that, we're going to see if it attacks with harm on this turn. Which it does. It summons the harm meteor. So... In conclusion, damaging Entropy's SP does not change its attack pattern, but it does change the power of its ice attack because it can't use its SP to boost it. Mm -hmm.